All right, it looks like we are live. Hello, closers. Happy Friday. Don Sullivan here, and I want to bring to you one of my favorite topics ever, and that is the closing conversation. So I want to tell you the reason I'm bringing this to you now is because we're here and everyone wants to know, how do I follow up and close that sale? So I'm going to literally bring you everything I know, everything I can right now about the closing conversation. And I hope it really helps you guys turn up the heat and close the sales you need to to reach your ranks and your commission goals this month. All right, are you ready? You may want to grab a pen. I have some um, some great tips for you to show you how to follow up like a pro and close those sales. So, all right, hey Lorna, I can see you're on with me live. Um, if you are catching me live, let me know that you're here. Say hello so I can give you a shout out. And if you are catching the replay, feel free to drop some comments, questions, and I will happily come back around later and answer those for you. So here we go. Whew, the closing conversation. So this is what happens on my team. And drop a one down in the comments if you have it happening on your team too. My team is posting, they're following our attraction marketing strategy, they're doing Facebook Lives, they're having crazy calls to action, and they're getting people to say, yeah, I'm interested, I'm curious, tell me more, right? And then my teammates or newbies to network marketing, they say, they, they take a screenshot and they come to me and they say, now what do I do? Somebody wants more information. How do I close this sale? Well, here's the number one mistake that a lot of newbies and people on my team sometimes make. They go straight for the sale. They don't ask questions. They don't find out what is the value to this person of the product or service that we're selling. They don't find out what the person is really truly looking for, what results they expect to happen. And when you go right for the sale like that without creating value, you're almost always just shooting yourself in the foot. So if that ever has happened to you with your teammates, with yourself, definitely happened to me early on before I knew better, um, drop a one down in the comments. I think that this is a common obstacle that's that's easy to overcome, but it common, it's a common mistake that a lot of network marketers will make. So this is how you wanna coach your team, and this is how you wanna think about it yourself. We are not making sales unless we are creating value, right? So if you're going to a person who raises their hand and says, yeah, I want more information, this sounds amazing, I might wanna check it out. Your first step should be, hey, thanks so much for hopping on. Thanks so much for watching my content or whatever. Thanks so much for connecting with me. I would really love to hear what caught your eye about this, right? So we're asking a question. What caught your eye about this? What specifically are you interested in? I like to start with the question, are you looking for products for personal use or are you looking for the business opportunity? And that's when it breaks the ice and gets the person thinking, oh, maybe I didn't realize there was also a business opportunity. Maybe I was just looking at products or, or vice versa. Maybe I was just looking at the product opportunity and I wasn't thinking maybe the products would help me personally as well. So either way, you just start the conversation, right? You start the conversation and you show your prospect that you are interested in them. You are not only 100% interested in making the sale, but you are interested in them. What results are they looking for? What gap will the, this product or service fill in their life? How can you support them? And, and all the things, right? So I actually have a little bit of a checklist I wanna go down with you guys. So here's how the conversation goes. Person raises their hand, you say, what caught your eye about it? They answer, so now you have some information, right? They're looking to feel better. They're looking to have more energy. They're looking to look better. They're looking to lose 20 pounds. They're looking to earn $1,000 a month, those kinds of things, right? So we want to start there. Awesome. Thanks so much for sharing that information for me. What's going on right now that you're feeling stuck with your weight, with your health, with your income? Like what's happening right now that you're feeling pretty stuck? And then just get a little bit more information out, the out of the person. We're, talk 
about peeling back the layers, right? So we want to peel back the layers and find out what specifically is the pain? What are you fearful of happening if you don't make a change, right? And so I talk about what might things look like for you if you don't lose the weight, earn the income, have more energy, feel better, whatever the things are that they said to you, right? So we start with this question. What are things going to look like if you don't solve that problem? And then I just listen. I ask the question and listen. This is really important that you teach your team. You ask the question and then you zip it and you listen, right? You listen for the answer. So the next, they're going to give you an answer. And then you're going to say, wow, it sounds like you really need to take some action on this. Imagine if you did find a solution. What might things look like in six months or a year or longer for you? How, like, what are your real goals? What would that do for you? So we're not only caring, like, what does $500 a month or $1,000 a month do? What does losing 20 pounds or having more energy, what specifically does that do? We want to know, like, what that bigger um, goal or achievement will be, right? So, well, actually, if I lose 20 pounds, I'll be able to fit into my uh, my wedding dress again, and I want to put it on for my 20th reunion or something like that. So what is the real meaning here, right? It's not just the 20 pounds. What is the real meaning? Well, if I create $500 a month, I'll be able to send my kids to summer camp without being worried about the money, or I'll be able to sign my daughter up for dance lessons without sacrificing my son's baseball equipment, right? So we want to get down to the nitty gritty, like what does the $500 mean? What does the twenty dollars or twenty pounds really mean, right? What is the level of energy you're looking for? What does that really mean to you, right? So, what is the higher level meaning, right? So, we have this sort of sort of superficial level initially. That's where we start, and then we get to the deeper uh, meaning. So, drop a two down in the comments if you're with me that you can discriminate or you understand the difference between that first answer that tends to be really superficial. And then that next answer, and then the one after that, that's a little bit deeper, right? That little bit, little bit more deeper and will um, actually make your prospect take action more than that superficial level, right? This is the difference between pain and fear. We live in pain all the time. We just do. We accept it. We live in it. We're fine with it. We forget about it. We're, you know, whatever. But fear, fear makes us act right? Fear is what runs us out the front door if our house is on fire. Fear is what um, we, sh we shield our children with our body when, it, when a bus is coming down the road, right? So the fear of something devastating happening is actually what makes us take action way more than the pain, the chronic pain that we're feeling about how miserably we are. So, all right, you guys with me with that? So first we're finding out what's going to happen if you don't find a solution. Second, we're finding out what's going to happen if you do find a solution. And now the third phase of this conversation is about, so if I could deliver that to you, if I could help you fit into your wedding dress for your 20th anniversary, if I could get you uh, that income where you're not deciding between your son's baseball equipment and your daughter's dance lessons, um, what would that be like? What is that worth to you, right? So now we're not talking about a bottle of supplements or a container of skin cream or you know whatever else it is that you're selling, right? We're really talking about what comes when the person has your product or service. We're really talking about how life will change, right? And typically life isn't going to change from, you know, a, a bottle of moisturizer or you know, some high quality omegas or vitamins. But what does change is how that person feels and what they can accomplish when they start using your product and service, right? So what is the value? Now that you've created value for your prospect, the sale is easy. Now, tell me where this breaks down for you. Drop down in the comments, where do you have breakdowns in the closing conversation? Is it, I'm, I'm going to guess here, is asking enough questions, creating the value for them, right? And a lot of people, there's two huge mistakes that people make. They talk about themselves. They tell their story. Meanwhile, the more they talk about themselves, the more their prospect is checked out, right? Trying to get out of the conversation. And then the other thing they do is they don't, um, 
they don't ask enough questions and then stop talking, right? Which means you're not creating value for your prospect. Does, does that make sense to you? Okay, so here's what you do. So next you say, all right, I'm gonna help you get into that wedding dress. I'm gonna help you get those um, recreation activities for your children with ease so that you're not sacrificing other parts of your life. What is that worth for you, right? And people 99% of the time are gonna say, oh, that would be priceless, right? They're gonna say, oh, that would, that's worth everything. Well, here's the deal, guys. Priceless is not an option. <laughs> you know, we don't have, there's not a, a bill that says priceless on it, right? We have ones and fives and tens and twenties, right? That, that's the, the currency we're, we are dealing with, right? So priceless isn't an acceptable answer. So you wanna say, you know what? If you had to pay for that, what would that actually be worth for you? A few hundred dollars, a few thousand dollars? Like if money and time were no object, like what would you actually pay for that? And then usually people can nail down a figure, right? And they might say, oh, $2,500, $10,000, $25,000. And then your next response is awesome. Because my product, my starter pack, my idea for you, my recommendation for you is actually way less than that. And I can get you started today. How does that sound? So now you've shifted the conversation from buying your product to buying their dreams, right? Do you see that shift? If you're not making that shift, your prospect is not gonna see the value and you're not gonna make the sale and you're going to feel frustrated. And guess what guys, we are in this business to make sales. We are in this business to make commission so that we can earn a living, so that we can do it more. We are in this business to help people find solutions because that fills us up. That gives our lives purpose and meaning and it's really necessary to have the emotional balance to keep moving forward in this business because you do get plenty of no's, right? Like who doesn't get plenty of no's? We all do, at all levels we get plenty of no's. We have to have the persistence to keep going anyway. And if you could increase your closing rate by 30, 40, 50%, would that make it more enjoyable? Would that make it more fun, right? Yeah, drop fun down in the comments. If you could increase your closing rate 30, 40, 50%, would that make it more fun for you? It would make it more fun for me and I'm having a lot of fun right now. So that is the, the skeleton, the guideline for the closing conversation. Um, this is exactly what I teach my team. And in my team meetings, we actually role play, right? So it's really powerful to have these role plays because when you're the, the coach, the one asking the questions, you really learn to pause and to sit in that uncomfortable quietness between question and answer. And when you're role playing the prospect, you really can understand the viewpoint of your prospect and how really what they want most from you is to feel understood by you. Does that make sense, right? Your prospect wants to feel understood by you and they want to know that you, beyond a shadow of a doubt, can be responsible for helping them get to their goals and dreams. So, hey Angela, thanks for hopping on today. You you're catching me at the end here, but I just wrapped up the closing conversation. Um, Angela is, is uh, fortunate enough to have been with me on some of those role plays I was just telling you about. Um, so the role plays are really fun and interesting on both sides. So if you do get a chance to practice this with your team, I highly recommend it. Somebody practice being the coach, somebody practice being the prospect and ask the questions, feel what uncomfortable silence feels like, allow your prospect a few minutes to have, to gather their thoughts and give you an answer and allow them time to create value in their own mind. So I'm gonna wrap this live up with this um, quote here. Um, if the pro product, if the pro, <laughs> excuse me, if the prospect is saying your programs, your services, your products are too expensive, then you have not created enough value for them. If it's too much, they don't see the value. Okay, it's not ever about the price, it's always about the value. And when you create the value by asking the questions, um, your prospect will happily join you either as a, a distributor or a customer. 
So that is how the closing conversation works. That's the gist of it. Um, if you are looking to learn more about the closing conversation, I definitely work with people one-on-one. -on -one. You can role play with me as well. And you may want to um, check out my coaching programs, my coaching packages, where I can actually walk you through this, help to teach you so you can turn around and help to teach your team so you can have duplication throughout your entire organization. So if that sounds good to you, drop duplication down in the comments or connect with me on Messenger and we can talk about what coaching package seems right for you. All right, guys, have an awesome rest of your Friday. Um, thank you, Angela. The closing conversation does work. You are proof in the pudding. And um, have a great weekend, and I will see you all again soon. Bye-bye.